We are Retro Rivals Scott and Jen, and this is a comparison and review of the PS1 Classic Kadelka. Alright, so I played this game in 2023, at the first of 2023, just over a year ago. Scott played it a few weeks ago because I challenged him to play it as uh, part of the games we were going to get each other to play this year. We're gonna go over everything we do in Scott's regular review, the story, the characters, the gameplay, all that, our overall opinion. We're gonna compare how yeah. each other's playthrough went. And also what I thought of the game. Versus what I thought. What you thought of the game. So as we always do, we start with the story. You'll notice we have a nice, healthy little stack of papers on here because I played it over a year ago. So I had to refresh my memory, which made me make a lot of notes because that's how I operate best. It's so. an older game. We're, we are not going to go out of our way to try to hold back spoilers because... No. Guess what? There's really only one way to play this game. That's on the PS1. And that's on the PS1. Or emulation. That's exactly. It. Let me caution anybody that uses ChatGPT as their prime method of reviewing a game. You should play it. You shouldn't just rely on ChatGPT because it was You're wrong. That sounds so bad. You're, yes, it was wrong. So here's what the overall story was. Set in Wales in 1898, the story follows the main protagonist, Kadelka, as she is called to Nemetin Monastery by the spirit of Elaine. The wife of Patrick, the monastery owner, Elaine tragically dies at the hands of an intruder while Patrick is away on business, leaving her soul to wander and Patrick to go mad, dabbling in alchemy and satanic practices to try to resurrect the body of his beloved wife. Kadelka encounters many people in the game, both living and dead, two of which become playable characters. As the story unfolds, you begin to understand why Elaine has called you here and how all the characters fit into the overarching plot of the entire game. We used to go a lot more in depth into the story and we were really missing a category which I think explains the story better because it all relies on your characters. So, I mean, obviously, Kadelka is named after the main protagonist, Kadelka Isant, mm -hmm. and she is a gypsy that has psychic powers. Yeah, abilities. psychic powers. To and wield magic, obviously. Yeah, and as you hear from the story, she ends up there because Elaine calls her to the monastery to help. There's a secondary and a tertiary character. You have Edward, who you meet right off the bat. Yeah. She climbs the wall. Edward's there. He has a gun. He looks like he's gonna he's shoot already her. Been wounded. wounded. He's been yeah. He was attacked by a monster or something yeah. like that. Yeah. He's a, an adventurer. He's so a thief. He's a thief. He's, he's a, a thief. failed academic. So he's he, there to steal. He's there to steal. So yeah. he uh, because he's a failed academic, he goes into the whole thievery business. The last character is uh, James O'Flaherty. O'Flaherty. He see, I, w I didn't remember his last name because all you ever see is James. Yeah, they right? only ever come up on the screen as the first and name. And James, he's a bishop and he's going to that same monastery because he was sent there by the Vatican to recover a document. Exactly. So those are all your playable characters. You have a host of non-playable characters that are, some are more important to the game than others. Some they could have left out, realistically. Oh, re yeah. Ogden and Bessie Hartman, they're your caretakers. The caretakers of the monastery. Yeah. Um, I do believe you see them twice in the entire uh -huh. game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. First uh, time, it's, it's fairly early into the game you see them. Yeah. And then maybe halfway through. Halfway through. Them. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. He is mad. Yep. Was the captain of a ship, no, that, it, well, a pleasure it, ship that killed everybody in a board, it sank. Well, he caught on fire and, and everybody on the ship died except for him. He ended up being blamed by everybody for the fire and everybody dying. Yes. And um, the only person that believed his story was Elaine. Yeah. So then he decided to go to the monastery and work for her. So that kind of brought him back to reality. But then Elaine obviously dies because she, her soul, her spirit calls to Kadelka to come to the monastery, so he goes insane again. His wife, we find out later, you know, she backs him up because it's her husband, but she doesn't really believe in what he's doing, and that ends not so well for Ogden. Or Bessie, I guess. Charlotte is another character in the game. She's a ghost. She was actually Queen of Hanover's daughter. She was born out of wedlock, so she was 
born in secrecy, mm -hmm. tucked away in the monastery, whisked away. <laughs> whisked away. So she only ever grew up there. So she didn't know any sort of love because it was a tumultuous place at best. Yeah, the, the monastery itself is like a, basically an evil place. There. Yeah. And she thought she was just thrown away. Yeah. Like, so she never felt never loved. So anybody that came there, if she could guide those people to basically killing themselves too and becoming yeah. part of the monastery, part of all the souls that resided there, she was trying to do that. And uh, you can break the curse or not, depending on how you play the game and what you get to do it. It's easy. I think it would be easy to miss that. I think it would be too. Now, there are two key things for her character. You had to find the letters that her mother had wrote to her that she never received. No. They held them back. They never gave them to her. No. So she never knew that her mother even cared about her at she all. She didn't know anybody in the world And then her. the other key thing in the game you had to do was pray at her grave. Yes. And then if you did both of those, when you run into her in her room of the monastery, you give her the letters, and then you she give her peace, and then she, and she ascends. She ascends. Yeah. If you don't have, I don't know if you need both of them or either one. Possibly, if you don't have just even just the letters. Yeah. You end up having to fight her. Yes. She turns into one of the boss battles. We we got lucky, and we both had everything we needed to help her move on. The next character is kind of a forgettable character. His name is Elias, he's a thief. He's following them at the start of the game to try yeah. to kill them so he can get the treasure. He doesn't really add anything to the story no. other than add, adding kind of a boss level fight. And then the other part of that is you get to see some of Edward's Edward, yeah. character because afterwards, Edward looks at him and says, well, I don't trust him, and then bang, And then he kills and him. Then shoots him. And I was like, him. I guess there's no honor among thieves. That's all you see of him. That's it. So Edward's a, a thief and a murderer. Now Patrick... Basically the entire reason why this whole story is happening. Yes. He was so heartbroken and stuff that when his wife died... She got killed by an intruder. Yeah. He never forgave himself. And this is where this document comes in to play. Because it's said to be able to change the effects of life or death. Because he wants to bring her back. To he life. wants to bring her back to life, yes. and then uh, that also describes how Roger Bacon, Roger Bacon. He's basically a mummy that's up and moving around. I don't remember how he died, but you find him in a coffin. Yeah. And he hop, pops. He's like, "This guy's dead." And then he hops up there, and, and he the says something scene. about the immigrant document, and then just he lays back. Lays down. right back down. But then when you come back, you go back in that room later. He's gone. Mm -hmm. He's not there. Mm -hmm. You end up running into him later in a light like the library. Yeah. It is the library, actually. You'll run into him outside in the graveyard as well. Yes. Yeah. That's when you get separated. Yeah. And you're by yourself and just Cadelka at that point. He was a warlock. And a an, uh, 12th century alchemist. Been dead for a long time. He's been asleep for a century. I know they said that one yeah. point when he was sleeping in the coffin and he woke up. And then there's three other people, enemies, I guess items we should mention mm. uh the ghost twins they don't really play more of a story than to advance past a certain point because you got to get the dolls Kay. for them see i think with the ghost twins because if you go and you read all the letters and documents and all that stuff patrick was trying to resurrect his wife and he needed sacrifice for this big golden cauldron yeah that's what part of the whole ritual was first he tried farm animals and stuff like that i do believe he got Ogden to start kidnapping people. And I think these two girls were the first because there was something I read that was basically kidnapped my first two victims and it was two girls. And he beheaded them. Yeah, he tortured and beheaded them and then I think they go into the cauldron or whatever. You can't advance the game without giving them their dolls. They're guarding a, a door. You can interact with it before you have both of their yeah, dolls. Yeah, and I did. And I did. And it's like an impossible fight. Yeah. You can't win. You're not going to win it. Yeah. Yeah. I did not interact. Oh, I did. I didn't know not to. I didn't know not to. So I was like, uh, well, I, okay. <laughs> yeah. The only other enemy that's really worth noting or mentioning is the gargoyle. And that's a completely optional boss. The whole story starts off on Halloween. Yeah. And then All Saints Day. So on the stroke of midnight, All Saints Day, which would be November 1st, all the spirits kind of culminate into yeah. this gargoyle that is like is literally the toughest boss in the game so that being said 
I did not fight this boss. But Scott did, but we'll get to that in the gameplay and <laughs> why he fought the boss. And uh, that's all your playable and non-playable characters. And I think that really adds something to the whole review, going over the characters. They're really the biggest part of the game. So, gameplay. This is a tactic RPG. Yep, so it's kind of like a chessboard style of movement. Certain characters can move farther and faster. But you're not on a tactical grid as you're walking through the monastery. No. It's kind of like Resident Evil meets Parasite, Parasite Eve. Eve. Yeah. More of a Parasite Eve controls than a Resident Evil, because Resident Evil is very tanky. Yes. Parasite Eve wasn't. It was like very similar to the motion control like of the first Parasite Eve. Yeah. Um, you had puzzles in this, you yep. had time-based secret weapons, which is mm -hmm. how Scott defeated the gargoyle. Well, let's get into the puzzles before yeah. we go into too far, because honestly, I'm not the brightest light bulb in the pack there, so I had to go start looking up some of these puzzles. Yeah. I did not figure out the floor puzzle. There's a puzzle on the floor. Yeah. You can only Bunch walk on the certain symbols in the right pat in the right formation to unlock, to unlock the, the other door. door. I found all the symbols. I found the symbols on the box, and I found the symbols that were on like a post. And I do believe it was by some stairs or in the hallway or maybe even possibly outside of that room. But my caveman brain, was like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> you had to look it up. So I looked it up, and when I looked it up, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, that was obvious. Another puzzle, <laughs> fun puzzle, was the I call it the music box puzzle. Yeah. So you walk into a room, there's four symbols, and there was something in the middle too, I think for, as a reset possibly. Yeah. The music box played the chimes, so then every symbol you stepped on made a certain tone of the mm -hmm. chime, so you had to like have a good ear. I might have done I that was like, bit looking. I was like, I don't understand. I, why, why, why? So I tried to read online what the guy was telling me. Pointless to me. I couldn't understand what it, What is he trying to tell me? Go go up and then left and then like, up. When you walk into the room, you're kind of like, are you going, do you mean go up on the screen or go up when you're facing in? And anyway, it was a debacle. I ended up figuring it out on my own. Um, the other puzzle that I remember was the safe where you get the letters for Charlotte. Yeah. Not really a puzzle. You just had to go and find the thing. I think it was, uh, that was the actual uh, plate glass, not plate glass, the, uh, what do you call it? Stained glass. Remember oh, that? yeah, 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 you yeah. You needed yeah. to find, I think it was five pieces, different pieces of stained glass. Yeah. And, and I got there and I was like, oh, yep, 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 yep. And I'm like, I'm missing one. In the description on the, the walkthrough that I was reading, it said, it's in this room here and that. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I started running. I'm like, maybe it's in this room because yeah. this one had an X on it. And I ended up finding it, ran back, got that. And as soon as you put that in, this, it just gives you the code. You don't even have to interact with the puzzle. It just... You go to the safe and it opens. You kind of touched on it a little bit, so I just want to mention it, the map. Yeah. When you walk into certain rooms, you can have temporary save. Yeah. And it always give you the name of the room underneath. Yeah, so I guess you could write it down you as you go. You could write it down. Obviously, you're going to pick stuff up. There were certain things you had to have to even get mm. the bad ending of the game. Because there's a bad, there's a good, and then there's basically a just stop. Like, there's... Game over. Game over. Yeah. But more than anything, was really cool was the time-based secret weapons, which you did get one of. When I got stuck on the boss... For, for the uh, disc three, the disc three boss, I started. I'm like, I'm at a standstill. I'm not hurting the boss, and it's not hurting me. And I've been playing for a half an hour. Yeah. What am I doing wrong? Yeah. So then I went down the rabbit hole. I'm like, oh, there's secret weapons because this guy that I was reading his walkthrough had a secret weapon. I'm like, well, I can't get that one now because I'm already the past that play passed. time. I'm into my 12 or 13 hour. Yeah, hurt. you weren't far past it either. Oh no, That's I just missed it. That's the worst it. part. And I was willing to go back. But then I was reading, he was like, if you want to face the gargoyle, you're going to need level three magic this, level three magic that, you're going to need level three heal, mm -hmm. you're going to need a uh, mid-60s uh, experience level. And yeah. I was like, I'm nowhere even close to this. So I decided I have to grind anyway. I might as well grind. Hit my 22, 22, 22. Yep. See if I can get that secret weapon, which was the Roger, was it Roger's Cane? Roger's Staff. Roger Roger's Staff. Staff or Roger's Cane. Anyway, that's like a super overpowered, it's the most powerful weapon in the game. Can I just say right here, I didn't even try to beat the Gargoyle, because I didn't feel like I had a snowball's chance in hell of doing it. Yeah. I, I recorded on my phone 
the process of doing it, because I played it in the other room, the retro room. Now yeah. It's on a CRT, and I know when I record it on my phone, you get those bad scan lines going. So I don't know if we're going to even be able to put it in, if it's even worth it. But well, I, yeah, we'll see. I absolutely stomp the gargoyle into the ground within like two or three turns. It's what crazy. It? It's, it's a joke. Because the, the walkthrough said, don't even try this unless you're level this. And well, I went in there. Been. I was like, holy shit. Oh, okay, here we my, go. My, my first oh. play of the gargoyle was, okay, Jim, this is my plan. To go in and see how much damage he does per turn on me versus what I can heal because I'll need... I'm at level one magic, and I was like, yeah. I think I got James up to level three heal. Yeah. And that was it. And I got Kadelka level three, I think almost every one of her magics by that point. Oh, okay. Except for heal. Because there's like six different magics. There's like... Oh, there's Holy four, shit. I do believe. Geyser. Geyser, uh, monolith, uh, what's the fire one called? Oh. You have to pop it up. Yeah, I thought there and was And then there six. was a tornado or cyclone or something yeah. like that. Yeah, why did I think So it's basically six? fire, water, wind, wind earth. Earth, okay, right. Yeah. Yes, you are right. Once I had that Roger's cane or Roger's staff... I gave, put that on Kadelka. She's hanging in the back. She's all magic offense. Yeah. I was hitting for the max. The max will only register on the screen for 9,999 hit points. And even if you hit past that, it won't yeah. register. And I do believe I was hitting past that by oh, a considerable oh, amount nice. because I think this I only attacked him twice. Because what's the health three point times. of the gargoyle? 30,000. Yeah, so if you hit him two times, I was like, clearly you were hitting yeah, more than from 9,999. It's on my phone, the little yeah. video. Yeah. And then the one where I did the save, that's on there too. Yeah. Uh, now, is the Roger Staff a breakable or unbreakable weapon? From what I read, some people say it was unbreakable. And then I read, um, maybe it was a fandom site, Yeah. where they literally, uh, fuck yeah, got it. in this range, 250 to 275 hits. Like, people oh, have tried it. Oh, okay. As far as I can tell, there are no unbreakable weapons. They're just very... Those ones are, like, very rugged. Yeah, because yeah. that's... Like, you didn't realize that at first. I was breaking weapons left and right with... Edward. Yeah, and then you went and had to go in bare fists for mm -hmm. a fight because you broke your weapons. There you but there's, like, several different kinds of weapons. You have your short range, your medium range, yeah. your spear, long range, which is a pistol or a rifle. Or Correct me if I'm wrong, you all still have a bow and arrow, too. Yes, I had two different crossbows and all the guns. You were like, running out of space between yes, your collectible. No, glad you mentioned that because of that last secret weapon, all those unlockable weapons, you have to have a certain amount of items in your inventory. That's your weapons, your your like potions, food, scrolls, like you can only have a certain amount. And you can only your maximum was fifty. And the <laughs> most you could put in it for that save to get that weapon was 43. Oh! That's so the it, highest. So if you had 49... You can't get it. When you were going to put in your uh, your points... Th this pertains more to, I would think, difficulty. So maybe we can move on from gameplay and talk about the difficulty. Because this really, sure. this really changes how your game plays through and how difficult or not difficult it'll be for you if you know what the hell you're doing. Yes. Difficult! Not difficult. I basically broke the game. Game almost broke me. So you have all these different uh, categories to put in your points. Yeah. For like, uh, you, you know, you got your strength, vitality, dexterity, agility, intelligence. Piety. Piety. Yeah, mind uh, mind and luck. luck. For my, uh, for each character, because I had gone and read what I should make each character, I knew roughly where I should put. So vitality is your health. Yeah. So everybody got health, no yes. matter what. Everybody got health. But then Edward was my tank. He's taking hits. He's, and he's up the front. Yeah. And he's wielding melee weapons or whatever. So you need to have strength S on him. Strength, but also dexterity. Yeah. Now... Didn't know that. She didn't know that because when I was going to put in my points, you get four points every time you level up. Yeah. Yeah. So what I was like, I'm like, how? Wh I don't want to look shit up. So I'm like, what do these mean? So I started hitting buttons on top. Like, okay, well, that tape backs it off. Okay, that and added magic. This one added health. And then I ended up hitting my R2, which is right trigger. Yeah. And it popped up a full description, like this whole description, what you have right here. Your um, intelligence, that's basically the strength of your magic, 
you also have to combine that with mind yeah. in order for it to do anything. Yeah. So you have to bring those up together. Now your piety is uh, basic your magic defense. Oh, okay. You can almost draw a line right here, and that's how I thought of them. Yeah. These are your magic people. This is your, your tank. Well, I just would assume you'd want your healer to have agility or dexterity nope. to, to heal faster. Agility, yeah. yes. The agility, because that's how fast you can attack. Yeah. It was like your, your turns between the three of them. Yeah. At first, I was getting... Kadelka was like the last one out of my turn. I was like, why not? Okay, I'm like, oh, and I start reading them again. Okay, oh, this is the speed of your turn. So I need to get her... Yes. Attacking going. first. And this is different than most RPGs because they level you up across the board where you need to yeah. go. I like and this one. This and made this, it fun. this makes you have some kind of control over how you want to play your game. Luck, I... Uh, From what I, I didn't, read, too, Luck did, luck did nothing. nothing. I Maybe pissed. it helped with drops? No. I didn't <laughs> see any difference. That's what I thought, too. I was like, well, I need more drops. I need more ammo supplies i need you know health and potions and I need all this and i just kept dumping dumping luck dumping points in the lock there and i was like this is not it's not doing anything it's funny you should mention that because when i printed this off from somebody's review or not review a walkthrough this is what luck said some players recommend not bothering with luck at all since it's hard to see what effects it has <laughs> yeah that's what i would say so we're into graphics now. we're into graphics and i mean it's a ps1 game so go into that knowing what to expect out of it. It's a PS1 game. I will tell you straight up, it's not gonna look good on a big screen. I played it on our CRT in the other room. Yeah. On a PS2, and it looked fine. It yeah. Looks, it looks good. It looks exactly what it's meant to look like for its age. Yes. Yeah, so what if I had it? to, if I had to play it in here on the 65 inch. Oh, it would have been muddy and. It just... would have been terrible. Yeah. yeah. That's why. It needs a remake. Exactly. Or a remaster. Or and whatever. I don't know how possible that is because of it ties to the Shadow Hearts games, which Kadelka's a prequel mm -hmm. to that, and SNK is involved, and then there's so many like little different components with passing the torch to other people and people getting cut out that I don't know if they could make it one experience or how that would the work. The developer was the same across the board, was it not? I... Sacknoth? Which is a weapon you can get after defeating the gargoyle. Yeah, yeah, which is really cool that they added that in. Yep. But what elevated this from being just your standard PS1 game, um, and I kind of, this goes into graphics and into music to, and sound, but we'll talk about music and sound a little bit more. There's full motion video cutscenes in the game with voice acting. It was way ahead of its time. Way ahead of its yeah. time. Way ahead of its time. I like I you guys know this channel, you know I love Parasite Eve. Yeah. The 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 full motion video and cutscenes and stuff like that was better. Yes. On this game. Yeah. It was four discs for a thirteen hour game, which I stretched out to twenty three. Which I st stretched out to twenty seven and a half. No, no, it wasn't that long. Yes, it was. I marked it down. Um, was it really 27? Yeah, yeah. And I was like 23 and a yeah, half or something? Yeah. You played it for four hours more? I fucking struggled with one boss for hours. I cried down here almost. <laughs> I was like, I'm ready to quit this game. I'm going to frisbee toss how, all four discs out the window. How, how, de how defeated were you when you see me just pummel the last boss? <laughs> I, I wasn't because... Your ending was shitty. My ending was awful. Yes. Terrible. Well, we get to that at yeah. the end there. Yeah. But it's different. It's a different experience than your regular RPGs because it wasn't the fluffy hero. Yeah. She she's kind of an anti-hero, and all the like they the all other, are. They all are. They the all other are. two players, yeah. like he, this one's a thief and the other one's a bishop. That that you know, he wasn't he wasn't a good guy. He wanted to <laughs> abandon his studies to marry this woman. I he what he's probably the best of. Of all of them, I guess, at the end. Yeah. 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 Well, especially with your ending. Yeah. But music and... Music and, and sound. So... Um, I really enjoyed the music. Yeah. You said you it took you a little bit to get used to the battle music. The and battle? I can understand yes. that. But when you uh, you looked at me and said, well, it's probably because of Kadelka's background. Yeah. Like Gypsy. Yeah. I was like, huh. I never thought of that. It kind of yeah. makes sense now. Because the rest of the music was very, you're in an old monastery. Yes, y almost like there's period. a choir hanging out in the background. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, ooh, it's 
kind of creepy. Yeah. yeah. So it, it it fit, and the fact that you had the voice acting, yeah. which I mean, what was at times cheesy, but added to the charm. You're crazy <laughs> if you believe this scoundrel. This killer's obviously executed hundreds of people. He needs to be turned into the police and judged in a proper forum. We're crazy. Why? Just because he's an immigrant? Or is it because he's one of the unsaved? That's bull and you know it, you pig-headed old bigot! What I'm trying I to say is- I believe this guy! Thieves can be exceedingly honest, you know? There's not too much more I can say about music in sound without going into composers and stuff like that, and I can't pronounce Japanese names. So that's why I didn't talk about the producer and people who worked on it, because I don't know that that's paramount to the review. No. So, I mean, uh, I guess if you're talking about the overall Kodelka creation. Music good. Music good. So this is where we get down to the brass tacks about value and replayability. Three different endings. Enjoyable. I enjoyed the gameplay itself. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed the atmosphere, the the music and the sound, and the, the whole monastery, that whole thing. It's a Halloween game, 100%. I think that's the only time I really struggled with knowing if you were going to like the game. I was yeah. taking into account he really, really, really loves Parasite Eve, but most of the RPGs you play it, are more of a hero, and they're very yeah. bright and colorful. It and felt very similar to Parasite Eve. Yeah, it so there was I was... a lot of similarities there. Yeah. I, I, I thought that would probably be yeah. the catalyst to being the reason you loved it. Oh, yeah. So I categorize them this way. There's a bad... The worst ending... There's a worst oh, ending, a bad ending. Oh, you see all the endings, yeah. Yeah, game over ending. The worst ending is... If you don't have Kadelka's pendant, and she blocks this burst of light that Elaine shoots last, at you, and it just year. incinerates you all and you melt. That's the game over. Game over, yeah. you don't win. I got that pendant by fluke, because <laughs> when you first, when the first, the game first starts up, and she's climbing up, the, she drops her she pendant. She drops it. We don't know where it goes, and they were tell like three quarters of the way through the game. Yeah. I was getting ready, like I had told you, I was getting ready to go into the, the different room, the secret room that was behind the fountain or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And the other side is the save point. Well, when I went the in that secret... The save point at the fountain. Yeah. Yeah. When I went in to go in the secret room, I got to this part where the ladder takes you downstairs, and I'm like, I better go save. And then I went out, and, like, the water's off on the fountain, but I was like, oh, shit. And like, I click on it anyway. Yeah. And then she gets the, the, the pendant. I'm like, oh! Yeah. Okay. I'm like... Fluked it. Yeah, I you did. Because if you it. hadn't had that pendant, if I didn't decide to go save there, I wouldn't have had that pendant. Then yeah, it would have been game over. And I forgot all about telling you that. Yep. Although it does say that there's a cat that can drop. You it. said that I fought a cat right at the. I don't know if it's a towards the end. Well, yeah, when you're going up the yeah the little tower. that that cat, if you do not have the pendant, will drop it. I don't know if that's an absolute or if it's a possibility, but the way Maybe I read that's it, that's where your luck. Comes into a play there. Yeah, I mean, it knows? could be. Yeah. But, um, so this is where our two experiences differed. Yes. I could not defeat the final form of Elaine when you climbed the tower. She goes through three different forms. Yes. I died at that last one, in which case James sacrifices himself and he breaks the whole thing, and Elaine and him both ascend. Yeah. yeah. To heaven. To heaven. He yeah. dies. The fucking whole thing's burning. Mm -hmm. He Edward picks Kadelka up, and she's like, I don't think we'll survive this fall. And he's like, we will. And they jump off the edge. Superman landing. Superman or landing. Superhero landing. Apparently, <laughs> Superhero. it was so impressive that they had a one-night stand. Bow, chicka, bow, bow. Bow. Yeah. And uh, he chooses oh, to leave, the and out. they say their goodbyes. She chooses to stay, and she, he thinks, they, somebody says, or it's, uh, Fidel said that they'll never meet again, and Roger's just like, oh, I think I'll meet him again someday. So uh, a baby spawns from that Goodbye. one night stand, we'll and that's where you get into Shadow again. Hearts. But we didn't play yeah. Shadow Hearts yet, so we can't talk about it. I will. Now, you had the good ending, which the, is... I had apparently the best ending, yeah. because I just absolutely hammered her. It was yeah. like taking a sledgehammer to a fly. It yeah. Was, so her soul... She didn't even hurt me. I don't no! Think. She... I was you seen... There. She seen the last battle because I saved it because I wanted her to see the last yeah, battle. Yeah, and we're sitting there watching it and everything plays out and Elaine's soul reunites with her body and then she 
falls and dies, and then you're just laying on the ground and you're talking about dead people can't speak and they don't have memories. And somebody told me about a memory once. It's See, that very best ending was so lackluster. I don't even remember it because you showed me what your ending was on YouTube yeah. afterwards, and that makes well because I looked at you. My after... ending felt like it was an unfinished ending. Yeah. yeah, I looked at you afterwards. I was like, well, that sucked. Do you that want me sucked. to show you what I got? Because yeah. mine's a better ending. Yeah, because it it advances the story into the Shadow Hearts series. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so when so I heard... Saying all that? Yeah. The, the different endings? I, I said to you multiple yeah. times now, I think the boss on disc three is the final boss. Yes. Because you don't need to fight the gargoyle. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to beat uh, Elaine. Elaine. You just have to have the pendant to get to the final stage. Yeah, and you don't have to beat her. You just need to... I think you still James have to gonna... get to the top, though. Yeah, I think so. So, yeah, her t first two forms aren't that strong. The last form's a lot stronger. Yeah. And then James saves you guys anyway, so it's fine. So, yeah, and then you get the ending that I think is the right ending for the game. I do, too. Yeah. That's why when I was struggling to beat that final form, and I tried it, and I tried it, and I tried it, I was just like, oh my god, I'm never going to get this. I'm not even close because when I leveled up all my attributes, I didn't in their own do spots. it properly because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. She didn't hit the R2 and yeah. see the description, read it all. Yeah, so, <clears throat> I mean, we talked about how, you know, the Shadow Heart series continues. There was also some really cool things that came from this game. There was a six-part radio drama that condensed some things and changed a few things, but it kind of told the whole story. And that came out in November 1999. Adds to the lore. Of the to the lore. Game, yeah. Then there's a Kudelpha novel, The Mansion Scream, but I think it's Japanese only. I don't, oh, know. There's I don't know if there's translation. a translation, but I'm going to check it out because I'd be reading, interested. I'd be, yeah. I'm yeah. not one for reading fiction, but I think that might be one I'd try. Yeah. yeah, but then there's also a manga that takes place six months after the original game and it follows Kadelka as she's pursued by a mysterious organization who seek to use the power of the immigrant manuscript for their own dark purposes. So I'd that might that be able too. to be something you could I get bet hold you of. That, I bet you both of those, the manga and the novel, mm -hmm. it would be very difficult to get, especially yeah. over here. So, um, want to talk about the value. I want to say that only 80,000 copies of this game worldwide. were sold worldwide. Worldwide, yeah. And that probably reflects the price. So, yeah. um, Canadian, it's 340 uh, complete, and American, it's 250 50. complete. Yeah. And then, the, I mean, they go down a little bit from there. From they loose. fluctuate a little bit there, yeah. too, depending, but they're not going to move that much. Yeah. yeah. There's no other way to play it unless you're going to emulate it. Emulate it. I would suggest, unless you're a hardcore collector, like, I think we'd be considered as hardcore collectors because yeah. we have some We have, a we lot have some games. games. Um, I, I highly recommend playing it on emulation. Yeah. Um, maybe getting a, like mod a PS1 or something. And then if you have a CRT, that's probably the best way it's going to yeah. work. Or get yourself a small uh, flat screen. Like yeah. Very small. Don't don't blow it up. Because it's just blowing up those pixels, and then they're just going to look, look like dog crap. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Steam was supposed to release this, and uh, it never just never came to fruition. It never happened. It was yeah. yeah. So it never went through. So that's the end of that. I mean, I, on this last page, I just have <laughs> overall. Overall, and it really doesn't need us to write it down to tell you our impression of what overall we got in the game. overall i was i was hooked within a couple hours i, that I made really me liked so it happy i liked i didn't know what to think at first when the first cinematics are playing and it was like it was a bit of a slow it was almost difficult at first mm -hmm. because every enemy you fought you literally had nothing you had nothing no no nothing you it was start like, out you were you struggled really there for maybe the first couple hours yeah. and then you grind a little bit and that's what happened i got to my first save point i'm like well i'm gonna backtrack and hit more enemies and i did a little bit of grinding and honestly you can break this game pretty fast if you read some stuff i didn't even that i just had to grind i just yeah. well yeah and i was putting my points <laughs> yeah. into the right place but honestly the first couple hours i wasn't i didn't have a clue until Ooh. i clicked on to my r2 and i was like oh geez this is a game changer yeah and then once after that I honestly, I don't think I used magic to heal barely at all. I might have used a couple of items to heal mm -hmm. here and there during a battle because I found I leveled up decently fast. Yeah. 
And every time you level up, all your your health, your magic, everything goes back up. And yeah. you get to put four points into where you think they go. And yeah. I honestly, I didn't have a problem after that hour or two of grinding. Yeah. Smooth sailing until I hit disc three boss. Yeah. So, you? I, I really, really enjoyed the game. Um, it was my first tactic RPG. And my one of my first, first tactics, too. Your first well, tactic. I, I've tried a few. That was the first one I got hooked into, and I understand that for people that know the game, that it's a very simple tactics-based yeah. game. So I mean, maybe that's what I needed is something simple because I'm yeah. kind of simple. <laughs> no, but I mean, I mean, that's a good way to start. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Now I have a whole new appreciation, know, appreciation for, for that, and we have a pickup video coming up here soon. You'll see why. <laughs> see why I have a new or how I exactly. Yeah. I kind of held my breath waiting for you to give me some sort of clue that you yeah. yeah. And when you said you loved the game, I was really excited because you play way more RPGs than I play. Mm. I don't have many under my belt, so I wasn't sure my recommendation was valid. You know what I mean? Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, I was for like, me, do I really know what I'm talking about? For me, it scratched that Parasite Eve kind of itch. Yeah. I, I love first Parasite Eve. I didn't like the second Parasite Eve. Yeah. Second Parasite Eve is Resident Evil to me. Yeah. No. I'm kind of wondering if I'd like And that, if I had to play second Parasite Eve first, Resident Evil, oh, I love it. But I love the first one, uh -huh. the combat and everything so much, the second one's so differently, just like, oh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can see that. But yeah, scratch that itch for me. That's awesome. I love it. Uh, we're going to probably continue doing this with the other three games that we picked for each other. Uh, and I am still playing mine. I'm going to be playing it for a while because... You will, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm about halfway through. Oh, are you? Halfway. I'm 30 hours in. 30 hours in? Wow. <laughs> Listen, I'm not quite halfway through that. She couldn't beat the game at, what, 40... Kudelka. How many hours did you put 27 in 27 and a half. She put 20. She it's literally. A 13 hour game. I doubled. She it. literally doubled the game and couldn't beat it. And couldn't beat it. I got the good ending though. I'm, I, I'm standing by that. I now going through it like I hit this. I probably what? What was my last save? 23 oh, hours. 23 and a half hours. Yeah. Ish. I could have probably beat that game. I won't say 10 hours earlier, but definitely six hours earlier. Yeah. You I mean, I overestimated or took what the the review I, the walkthrough said oh this is gonna be so hard i was like oh my god I'm, i got better this grind. is like the hardest thing i'm ever gonna do i get better <laughs> grind away I, you got the better ending i did get the better ending just by chance thank you so much for watching and until next time game on